Colonel Habib Azebi and Mohammed Nabil bin Sheikh Arbi. They know much about our history, about what happened in Benzert, about ha what happened in Tunisia since the 60s. I would like to give you an idea about their background. Uh, I will start with Colonel Habib Azebi, he graduated from French Military Academy Saint Cyr. He belongs to the first promotion of the Army Officers Advanced Course in the United States, Command and Staff College in the United States, War College of Paris in France, um, PhD in International Relations, the American University in Washington, D.C. I would like to move to uh, Colonel Mohammed Nabil bin Sheikh Harbi, Bachelor degree in 1973, Military Academy from 74 to 77, Basic and Advanced course in the United States, Management Supply course in Germany, Command Staff School in Tunisia, War College of Paris in France, and High Commissary Studies from 90 to 1992, Master degree, Doctorate in Management. Uh, it's a long resume. Gentlemen, welcome to FTC. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, my first question is: uh, It's amazing to to see your resume and to know that, uh, despite the fact that you belong to a different generation, I have the feeling that you are still young when I when I see this resume. That you know much about the history, about the past, and much about the present as well. Well. Uh uh, we have the chance today to have two officers, one from what we call the European military graduate, the first classes of the Tunisian Armed Forces, and the, the Mr. Uh, Colonel Nabil is graduate from the Tunisian Military Academy. So we have, like the association itself, mm -hmm. we, we have officers from all the classes. Yeah. So there is no difference between what we call the first promotion or classes and the new classes. It's, it's a mixed, mm -hmm. and, and uh, if I may say, uh, myself uh, graduated from the first uh, a class of uh, called Habib Bourguiba, I, I, I know what happened in, in Bezerta. Welcome to FTC. Uh, thank you. Uh, for me, I'm graduated from the Military Academy uh, of Tunis. Mm -hmm. Then I went through trainings uh, in several uh, levels. Mm -hmm. in the States, in Germany and in France. Uh, sure, uh, this education, this training uh, is the result of uh, a policy mm -hmm. of uh, President uh, Bourguiba mm -hmm. because I'm born in 54. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got a uh, good education and uh, do, do you yeah. think you have learned much from the experience in the United States, in France, in Europe in general? Um, what have you learned from that experience? Uh, in reality, we got a rich experience. Mm -hmm. This experience uh, let us uh, to know about uh, uh, foreign armies mm -hmm. uh, at the level of uh, Systems, mm -hmm. equipment, mm -hmm. uh, policies, yeah. and uh, doctrine, mm -hmm. and uh, this background let us uh, understand mm -hmm. uh, some tactics, uh, strategy, and uh, we, we are able to build our strategy, our our uh, own Tunisian strategy. Our, yeah. If I may say, in yes, fact, please. when you attend courses like Leaven North USA or the French War College, when you have officers from all the nations, mm -hmm. very high level of yeah, education, high ranking, official high -ranking officers. Ranking officers. So this experience, this daily uh, discussion, and uh, you, you learn, you learn uh, more than the techniques, the military techniques. You, you learn the international finance, you learn the international strategy, and mm -hmm. so on. So uh, this experience, uh, uh, it's very important for us. Even it's a small army, but it's very rich in in, in, of, in, in education. Very Do you rich. think studying in in France and the United States uh, was a kind of privilege for the old generation? Certainly. Certainly, sure. certainly. Bourguiba wants to have uh, to have very high educated, uh, high-ranking officers, and uh, it, it was it has not 
never been a very big army, but it has very high educated, mm -hmm. uh, high ranking officers. That's, we couldn't afford to have an army like Egypt or uh, other sure. countries. Is that, so he focused, uh, he, we will talk about it later yeah. on, mm -hmm. he focused on that. This explains why uh, today uh, the high ranking officers at least, at least uh, have six years of high education. Six, at least. Mm -hmm. It's between six and ten and twelve sometimes. And I think the very fact that you are here speaking in English is the proof <laughs> that you belong to the right generation. Uh, I would like to ask you about former National Army Officers Association. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to know more about the background of this. Uh, if I may, Nabi. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this association uh, was forbidden by Bourguiba and Ben Ali. We stay. Bourguiba and Ben Ali. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we, it's, it's, uh, we, 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 we can understand if you say by 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 Ben Ali. But why Bourguiba? Bourguiba because he, he never he, he never want to, to have what they call les frères les les, les officiers libres d'Egypte. You mm. know that he, he was yeah. afraid of that. So uh, we had several attempts and not successful. Uh, the last one was in uh, 1988 mm -hmm. and. Uh, and also, the, 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 the political, uh, I would say, the political uh, leaders mm -hmm. never want to have an association. They were yeah. afraid that one day mm -hmm. they will have a coup. And the history uh, just proved that w there was no coup. So, the Tunisian yeah. army is not, it's a republican It's army. a clean one. It's a clean one, alhamdulillah. So, uh, uh, in, in fact, in, 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 in January 14th, after the January 14th, uh, some uh, former officers of the National Army have succeeded to create this association mm -hmm. uh, in April uh, 18, uh, 2011, which provides to them an adequate space to exercise intellectual and social activities and also to interact positively with the different components of the civilian society. Mm -hmm. Somehow to upgrade the associative tides and to contribute in consolidation of solidarity traditions. Colonel Nabil uh, Bishir, yeah. what can you say about the association? Uh, the association uh, goals, mm -hmm. for example, yes, uh, first uh, providing the appropriate climate uh, to care about uh, former officers mm -hmm. at different levels, mm -hmm. social, cultural and to ensure their social integration. Mm -hmm. uh, second, Keeping up with military uh, research mm -hmm. by by uh, by uh, participating to enhancing and developing strategic and mobilization research and the consult mm -hmm. uh, Then uh, we have the activities of the association. We have uh, different activities: intellectual, cultural, social. Mm -hmm. uh, for the intellectual uh, activities. Uh, uh, we have to uh, get following up uh, studies and researches mm -hmm. about national security at the level of general strategy mm -hmm. and the more participating in case of request to formulate special and particular perception of military strategy. It's clear that you, you belong to the, to the Tunisian military. <laughs> <laughs> you speak in, in, a, in, in, a, in a complex way. Uh, what about the cultural activities of the association? Uh, we have to enrich uh, cultural balance mm -hmm. of the membership yeah. and the interested in different cultural spectrum mm -hmm. through lecture, shows and mm -hmm. visits. I would like to uh, ask Colonel Khabib Azebi about the social activities of the association. But providing, it's easy, providing moral and material authority by mm -hmm. reinforcing solidarity bonds Mm -hmm. and framing charity and volunteer action and also facilitating access to leisure activities of the uh, foreign and the retired uh, officers. Colonel uh, Azebi and Colonel uh, Nabil bin Sheikh al I would like to uh, ask you about your experience as military in the Tunisian army. What have you learned from this experience? Well, uh, the, first, the first experience of an officer an mm -hmm. officer is first of all the leadership, mm -hmm. the permanent contact with our collaborators, 
a different level. And mm -hmm. this is a lack. Now, when a young man and a young uh, girl graduates from the university in Tunis, they don't have the experience of leadership. But the way to manage, the way to, to collaborate and to, to, to share their experience with their, their uh, collaborators. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's very, very important in the army. Now today you have people who, who are graduate have the doctorate in such and such, but when it is to have a, a, a company to make business, mm -hmm. they no, they don't know because they fail. They, because they don't have this uh, meaning of the know how. No, no know how and, and leadership is, for instance, about twenty five percent of uh, uh, high schools in the military level, mm -hmm. North, they call superior of the guerre à Paris, and so on. They 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 teach you the way to command men that's very important and how to to bring men to death sometimes in the army you know i said you give orders and you know he's gonna he's gonna die he's gonna die and he he goes no. he goes to uh, to death that's very important and that's the experience now uh, the, the other experience is, is that with this large very large knowledge mm -hmm. uh, we, we we do we we know a lot about uh, techniques of management, of uh, uh, accounting, of, of, of technical, as an engineer in the army, you, mm -hmm. you, 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 know, you, you know all that and during your career uh, you, you, you become a real professional, a real professional. That's, I like very much this, this word, the professional. <laughs> the right uh, yeah, because it's a lack in Tunisia, yeah. we have to say it. Lack of professionalism. You mean the military yeah. or in, in all sectors? Uh, mainly in all sectors. Mm -hmm. Mainly in all sectors. What about you, uh, Colonel? In my career, I got a rich experience. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, uh, relationship with mm -hmm. different uh, levels of uh, troops. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the mainly uh, benefit. Yeah, the main benefit. Yes, please. For myself, is the, to, to know how to deal with people. Mm -hmm. That's the leadership, to command, and uh, to get a permanent contact with our collaborators mm -hmm. at different levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the army is compound of uh, different classes mm -hmm. and different levels, it's a micro society. Yeah. True. So, when uh, we deal with people, we have the capacity and the ability to command them. You're talking about the army. You're not talking about the family. No, <laughs> no, the family. It's harder. It's very yeah. harder. Okay. Maybe it's hard to deal with, the with your kids <laughs> than to deal with, with people. Soldiers. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Colonel Habib Azebi has mentioned a very important detail. He said, when you command, sometimes you know that uh, the soldiers are going to die. We have heard different versions about the Battle of Bizert. What is your own version as soldiers who have participated, who know about the, uh, the, the, uh, the event, who know about the history? Because you know the new generation did not study anything about the Battle of Bizet. Maybe one or two pages, no more than that. You're totally right, but let's make it clear. Mm -hmm. The army and the officers who participated yeah. in the Battle of Bizet were never authorized to give a lecture about what really happened during these events. They were never authorized, why? Yes. The politicians Let's the politicians see. or the politician? The politician. And, 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 and all and the people yes. around? Uh, PSD as well as RCD mm -hmm. did not want to listen to the truth. Which is? Which is, uh, the, the, the war was not prepared. The war of Bizet was not prepared, military prepared. Mm -hmm. And why we had so many casualties. Mm -hmm. That, that's very important. And many no. martyrs. Many people. Yeah, many martyrs. Mm -hmm. We will go. Uh, so, so that's that's very important. We, we tried often, and they would say whatever they are. I mean, 
Ministry of Defense or Ministry. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to have uh, to have lectures on that because mm -hmm. you'd have many questions. The officers will answer the question, and that yeah. we, we hope to do it next week to answer all the questions about what happens because, uh, like we will say. Uh, Later on, we have two friends, mm -hmm. uh, witnesses who lived the war. I mean, they, they were there. They will tell us everything about this war. You're talking about the event uh, uh, yes. which is due to be held next week. Next week. We will talk about this Inshallah, event. Inshallah, on, on Tuesday 19th. Mm -hmm. Colonel Nabil uh, bin Sheikh al Yeah. How do you see the, uh, the, uh, the 1961 war or Battle of Bin Zert? The Battle of Bizert uh, is it's a known. It's very, very hard for you to speak about the event. Is a known. Clear. I was younger mm -hmm. that time, but uh, what I know mm -hmm. is uh, many civilian and military people mm -hmm. died uh, in front of uh, a very strong army, which mm -hmm. is the French army, uh, with uh, its navy, air force, and. Uh, uh, airborne troops. So uh, that uh, that time, the Tunisian army was young and uh, doesn't have uh, experience or training. Mm -hmm. Then uh, a part of this army was in Congo mm -hmm. uh, uh, within the United Nations uh, mission mission uh, Casque Bleu. Uh, so. Uh, many people uh, uh, are victims, uh, lack of uh, preparation, mm -hmm. uh, lack of uh, equipment. Some people say oh. that there was no preparation at all. At all. At all. At all. At all. At all. This is this uh, was a strategic have, If I may, I have an explanation for that. Yes, please. Go ahead. In fact, let's make it again. Let's make it clear. President Bourguiba was not reeling on his armed forces, the small armed forces. He did not rely on the, on yes. the small forces? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was no preparation, no plan, and no staff meeting in which the military commanders would give their point of view. Mm -hmm. Now we learn after, uh, after 30 years of experience and 40 years of experience, when you prepare a war, you have to make uh, meetings with the, the, the politicians and the military, um, military high-ranking officers, what mm -hmm. we call l'état-major général. That's, that's, Bourguiba was not reeling on that thing. Bourguiba is mainly, he, he focused on diplomacy. Mm -hmm. It's easy to understand and he was very successful, but not in Bezerta. Let's make it clear again. It's, it's always my, my open, we will hear more about it <laughs> anyway on, on next uh, mm -hmm. uh, Thursday. Uh, did Inshallah. he made some strategic mistakes during the Battle of Benzert, or Bezerta, as you say. I like to say it in Arabic, Benzert. We will have a short break with music and we'll be back. You will probably give us an idea about the strategic mistakes. Mm -hmm in 1961, July 1961. Our next track and we'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back. Dance with me by Michael Bolton. We are talking about the Battle of Bizerta or Benzert as we say in Arabic and I have two special guests Colonel Mohammed Nabil bin Sheikh Arabi and Colonel Habib Al Azabi. We were talking about the strategic mistakes during the Battle of in 1961. So, gentlemen, what do you think about what happened in July 1961? We talked about the, the mistake of the politician, of President Habib Bourguiba, and uh, the, the people around him. What about the, the, the mistakes of the military themselves? In 1961, uh, the Tunisian army engaged the operation mm -hmm. and uh, if we, uh, if we talk uh, of strategic mistake, perhaps from uh, political command, at that time uh, the army is not prepared, mm -hmm. as we said, but uh, if we uh, take the problem mm -hmm. from uh, the situation of uh, 
the army itself, mm -hmm. it is not a mistake because uh, uh, President Bourguiba was not relying on the armed forces. In fact, there were no, uh, as I said, there were no preparation, no plan, and no staff meeting mm -hmm. in which the military command, commander units would give their point of view. But when we see the result, we say it was successful. And the evacuation is a fact. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure that you were young in 1961, but do you know people who lost friends in the Battle of Minzer in 1961? In fact, we lost several friends, officers and NCOs, and a total of more than 150 soldiers. 150 Now, soldiers? Yes. We, uh, the, the, the army were, was very, very uh, new, no experience at, at that time. And mm -hmm. when we talk about our friends, Lieutenant El Ketab and, and, and Lieutenant uh, Ben Isa and the 11 officers of the Medina resistance, we were really very, very young officers. We got there two years ago from the, the, and, uh, the academy. The academy. So uh, uh, we, we, we didn't have any, uh, and, and in, in front of us we have a very experienced army from the NATO forces, the French the army, French with the airborne, with the, its navy, its air force, and so on. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this lack of, 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 of plan and uh, strategic preparation uh, was on, on the military field was not to our advantage, mm -hmm. that's for sure, it's easy to understand. So who are the real heroes of the Battle of Pintar? Well, let me, uh, let me say, we will give you some names, some names. Yes, and, go yeah, ahead. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant K. El Ketib, who, who retired as a three-star general, mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, at Sidi Ahmed the train station, the 11 officers at the Medina resistance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Major Mohammed Libjewi, people from uh, our friends from the National Guard members, and the 5,000 young civilian youth without any military experience or training. That's very important to know. Do you think it was only um, a bad experience for these people? Because some people claim that uh, sometimes you take advantage of this situation and you learn from the, from the, the battle field. Um, was it uh, a good experience for some people who have survived? Certainly, certainly it is when you have a very strong force in front of you and you, you're, you, the, the 11 friends, classmates by the way, uh, who, who were at the Medina, decided by themselves to, to, to make a resistance pool, you see, and mm -hmm. against the, the airborne uh, French troops who came from Algeria with a lot of experience, with a lot yeah. of equipment. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to... Uh, they, they, uh, uh, Il, uh, let me say it in France, it's a song, ils ont juré de, de, mm -hmm. de tenir jusqu'à la mort. Mm -hmm. That's not easy for they a young officer. To, uh, to, to, to keep fighting to, until death. death. Mm -hmm. That's not easy for a young officer who, who graduated just three years ago, two years ago from the, the academy. A mm -hmm. lot of courage there. Do you believe there are winners and losers in war or are all the people involved losing something in the battle? Uh, despite of human uh, loss, mm -hmm. we were definitely the winners because Tunisia succeeded to get uh, a UN resolution mm -hmm. and France evacuated Bizerte, Benzart mm -hmm. base. And two years uh, later, it was uh, Bourguiba's success, in fact. <laughs> so uh, the, the, uh, the soldier dies, the soldiers died in 1961 and the politicians are are always the winners well listen the, the the army the mission of the army is when you engage in the army you know that your life you are defending mm -hmm. your country that's our job and we are very uh, proud of it mm -hmm. we are very proud of it we we, we 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 defend this country the borders and you see today what happens in, in tunisia yeah that's our, our, our you know, obligation, it's our uh, un devoir mm -hmm. 
for our us. Our duty. Yeah, our duty to defend this country. And we, 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 we like it. I would say even we love it. That's our, <laughs> our duty. So everybody knows that war is the worst experience in the life of a human being, even a soldier. Do you think war had some positive aspects, maybe forging the personality of the soldier? Certainly, certainly. I mean, when uh, when you, you you have a war experience, I mean, you are you are a, a, another human being. You are you see the life and in a different way because you you you, you were very close to death, mm -hmm. and and it's not easy as an officer. Like said uh, Major Bjevi, when I was a young officer, he he told me often, listen, Habib, don't forget that as an officer you will give orders to your troops to go to death. That's not something easy, what we call the leadership. Mm -hmm. That's very important for us. So, uh, uh, certainly you get a very big experience. We, we had more, some other experience from the Congo, from the, uh, the, uh, the other country with the mm -hmm. United Nations troops. But war is, has never been something easy. And uh, you see, uh, by definition, war equals destruction and losses. Mm -hmm. In strategy studies or philosophy, war is a continuation of diplomacy <laughs> and it, it, it's not always successful. Sure. Most of the time it's not successful. Even war. diplomacy fails, uh, mm -hmm. we get through war. War. There is the ultimate and the, the unique solution for yeah. the uh, politicians who generally fail to find solutions to uh, to uh, their problems. What, what is your advice for the new generation of soldiers and high-ranking officers? Uh, myself, if you... Yes, please, go ahead. My uh, advice is to get uh, training, knowledge, mm -hmm. and uh, discipline, and sure uh, patriotism belief. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Uh, and as you know, every army has to be prepared mm -hmm. to prepare the war in uh, the peacetime. However, the high-ranking officers, mm -hmm. for the high-ranking officers, every mission should be clear with details. So, uh, the success in every mission is to be, to be clear. Colonel uh, Habib Azebi, I would like to move to the 90s, from Benzert 1961 to the 90s, to Berek The problem with the new generation is that even if you Google Berek Sahel, you find just two or three articles. If you Google uh, Benzert 1961, you just find a few articles. This is why we want to know more about what happened in the 90s. Well, in fact, we will not be very long on, yes, on, sure. that, on that affair. Mm -hmm. We know that the military of several ranks mm -hmm. and NCOs and enlisted troops were unfairly treated and humiliated. Ben Ali wanted to skim the army of its high-ranking officers and, of course, uh, uh, he, he accused them to, to prepare an Islamic, I would say, uh, between uh, these officers, mm -hmm. uh, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, with all the testimonies and investigation, the justice will put everything in place. The, the court and had not made all the decision up to now. Mm -hmm. We are following the situation as, uh, as we say, ancien. Mm -hmm. Officier yeah. of, of our uh, uh, friends, formerly officers. So, uh, do you think so we uh, we will one day know the truth about what happened in the 90s? Certainly, we 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 will know it by justice. We we we, we believe in our justice today. Mm -hmm. We believe on, on, on in our justice system, our courts with the investigation and the testimonies, we will know everything. Everything will be cleared and, uh, well, uh, we'll be happy for our friends yeah. who, who are really uh, 
badly treated, you know, torture. That's not something easy mm -hmm. as an officer. I mean, when when they put uh, uh, off your ranks and throw it away, and you know, it's it's, it's not uh, something nice. It, uh, we feel it. We feel it. We feel we feel that they were uh, humiliated, and that's not good for the army. You know? mm -hmm. Politician has to think about that. That's not. Uh, the army has to be a way of uh, far on any politic politician. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have to be. We, we are neutral. We are Republican. You yeah. have just one role. Wrong one role. We are Republican. Do you we, think President Habib Bourguiba made the same mistake? Because you know that uh, President Habib Bourguiba didn't provide enough funding for the military during his rule because he believed that. Investment in education and healthcare was the mm -hmm. priority. You think mm -hmm. he was right? Mm -hmm. Would you like mm -hmm. me to answer? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because he was aware of the small, very small resources of Tunisia and never relied on the strong armed forces. Mm -hmm. He preferred friendship and cooperation of the Occident, I would say USA and Europe. But he always focused, and that's very important, on a very strong train uh, of high-ranking officers, anyway, mm -hmm. within the most famous school and colleges around the world. I would say USA, France, Turkey, Italy, and so on. He was right to invest in education, health, and we see the result today. Mm -hmm. If you have if you have these officers, the, the behavior of the officers today and, and the high-ranking people, it's the result of what Bourguiba uh, ga gave us and teaches and what we gave to them. He, so Ben Ali, ben Ali from his part, neglected the armed forces. By the way, he is our classmate. Yeah, That's sure. very strange. This is That's why I was going to ask you about Ben Ali, because he neglected the army and gave mm -hmm. everything to the interior ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, observers claim that he was afraid of a military coup in Tunisia after 1987. Do you think it was a mistake or was it the right choice for Ben Ali at that time? Well, it's a mistake. It's easy to understand. Why? Uh, I mean, uh, reinforcing the, the, uh, the, the Ministry of Interior Equipment, Political Section, Investigation Bureau. And, I mean, he, he, it was a mistake. I mean, army is something neutral. It's a republican institution. Mm -hmm. he, you, you cannot reinforce, uh, I mean, the, 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 the police against, I would say, between uh, uh, commas. I mean, yes, against, no, uh, you, you see, it, 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 it's, yeah. not, it's not the right policy. It, it's a strong mistake, and we see the results today. Well, the results, if you talk about the results, it's obvious that the interior ministry is very powerful, but uh, on the 14th of January 2011, during, and during the revolution, the Tunisian soldiers proved that our army was the army of all the Tunisian people. Why do you think the army behaved in such a patriotic way during the revolution? Was this a result of um, a deep uh, belief in the Republican principles? Or some people claim that it's uh, just a reaction to the behavior of Ben Ali in the 90s and after the 90s? During or maybe both? No. During the revolution, uh, the Tunisian military mm -hmm. proved that our army was the army of all the Tunisian people mm -hmm. because it is a republic. Republican, uh, army. Republican army, mm -hmm. and it's not the first time that the Tunisian army proves it. Mm -hmm. uh, it has uh, many principles, fairness, Republican behavior, faithful, uh, and uh, all this thanks to its moral belief mm -hmm. and the Republican faith. You will go give more uh, details about your background, about what happened in the 60s in the Battle of Benzert and maybe about Barak de Sahel uh, in an, an event which is due to take place next week in, Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah in Tunis. Inshallah. We have just three minutes left, so could you please just give us an idea about the event? 
Well, this lecture uh, we waited for a long time mm -hmm. uh, will we, we, be held at the uh, La Cité des Sciences. Mm -hmm. We'll start about 11.30, I think it will be two hours and a half. Mm -hmm. And we will have the opportunity to, to, to listen to uh, his, uh, his retired General El Katib and Colonel Bashir Ben Isa. And uh, we, we will listen with pictures and, and, and we, we, we will listen and see what happens exactly uh, mm -hmm. during the three days. I hope you will be there and a lot of friends will be there and a lot of uh, professors. Of listeners as well, of uh, listeners. Yes, listeners. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> who, who, who may ask any question they want. And they can ask in Arabic or in French. Uh, no, whatever they, they want, even in English if they want. I mean, there yeah, is no difference for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so, so, so we, we know a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I told you in the beginning of, uh, of this uh, meeting that uh, neither Bourguiba or Ben Ali wanted to, to, to have a lecture about Bezerta. Bizert. Because it, it's. Or Benzerta as well. Benzart, Benzart, like if you want, say it. yes. <laughs> and we will have a kind, again, between commas, a kind of truth during this uh, lecture. Colonel Sheikh Arbi, Colonel Mohammed Habib Azebi, thank you very much for coming and sharing your experience. I think this edition was um, knowledgeful and maturing for myself and for FTC listeners. For those of you who have missed this edition, they can find the photos and the video on my Facebook page, FTC. <laughs> Oh